Hello there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right and a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Welcome aboard, everyone, to Must Read Alaska, coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place for conservatives to exchange ideas about Alaska politics and where politics is just the talk of the town on the last frontier. We love that you're joining us. Lots and lots of people are downloading our podcast, and it's it's uh, it's becoming you know it's becoming really fun for us. Hey, John, I noticed that you um, just drove in from Nikiski. Usually, you're in Nikiski, but today you're with me in the studio. How was the drive? The drive was amazing, Suzanne. Uh, it was crisp, clear, and sunny, and uh, full moon this morning. So it was pretty amazing. And so, how's the pass? Like, is it clear? Do they, the pass do they... is clear. Not not really any snow. Uh, it was basically like driving through a postcard for two hours. And uh, if you need a little breather, I recommend it because uh, the drive is literally worth a million bucks. Okay, so so. What I really like about driving that highway to, to back and forth from Kenai is when there's a full moon and there's snow on the mountains, there's just nothing on earth like it. And right now there is a full or fullish kind of moon and it really reflects beautifully on the mountains. So I recommend it to everybody too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And, you know, today, uh, on the Kenai Peninsula, I'm missing something today, which is unfortunate, but there's a really cool event happening uh, today on the Kenai Peninsula, and there's a protest for parents that are sick and tired of the school district leadership closing down schools. You know, every other day, there's a, they're either closed or they're forced to wear masks or they're back open and then they're back closed and then sports can happen and then it can't happen. And then you can, you have to, you can only do sports if you're swimming while wearing a mask. And, you know, the leadership of the Kenai Peninsula School District has been like all over the board in terms of all their their recommendations for masks. And if you can, it can't be in a classroom or if it has to be in Zoom. And so parents have gotten fed up with this and they are going to protest uh, at the school district board meeting. Oh, really? And, when, yep, when's that? It's today, 530 and okay. uh that's monday right monday yep and uh you know there's going to be a lot of chill kids there too because kids are kids want to go to school kids are not necessarily really excited about being on a computer for six hours a day on a zoom with their teachers or classmates and they want to be back in school and so i think a lot of this kind of stuff has fallen on deaf ears with the Kenai Peninsula School uh, District leadership and i hope that a massive amount of people show up to this and really voice their concerns because they need to get a reality check on flus are going to happen. Every year, you're going to have a flu season. Every year, you might have a couple flu seasons. And if this is how the Kenai Peninsula School District and other school districts across Alaska are going to react when a flu comes, let me tell you, public schools are gonna be obsolete because parents are not gonna put up with schools being closed down for five months because Sally got a boo-boo on her knee. Right, right. And uh, and so we'll see what happens tonight. Well, good to remember that uh, this isn't a flu. It's just a really serious virus that is, I mean, it's kind of like the flu, but some people it, it, it takes out pretty quickly. But kids don't seem to be suffering terrible effects from it. In fact, most of the time, I understand they're asymptomatic. They just have such strong little immune system. But some children do not. And so you kind of have to watch out for that. I don't want to make light of it. I think COVID is serious. But I also think that parents are absolutely fed up with these incoherent policies. I mean, what happens is one week you're in school, the next week they, they yank you out of school. And like you say, um, so that how many people are going to be in this protest today? You think? There'll be a couple hundred. Wow. which is a big number that's a for big deal. the borough. So Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So the parents are finally they're fed up with it. They are. They are fed up. Well, let's talk a little bit about Must Read Alaska. The, I just want to take a break here and thank you both. Thank you. And thank you, Scott Levesque, our producer, who is on the soundboard in the studio with us today. And usually he's remote, but we're happy to have him with us. And we have some exciting news to share about the Must Read Alaska show. On Thursday... Scott is going to be hosting a Thursday edition of the show, and it's something that is going to be a big asset to us. Scott, I want you to tell us all about it. 
Yeah, so we've got a ton of information and news that are constantly coming out, not just in the city and state, uh, but nationally as well. And for me, I'm a New England kid who's been in enemy lines for far too long. So it was a pleasure to jump on board to Must Read Alaska. And uh, what I think is going to happen is Thursday is just going to be a continuation of getting information and the truth out to people. So I'm really excited and I appreciate that opportunity, Suzanne. Yeah, it's great. And so basically we have the Monday podcast that we record Monday. We, we, we started dropping it first on Tuesdays. Now we're just dropping it as soon as we get it produced out on Monday. And then on Thursday, we'll have more great content from Scott Levesque. And so basically you're, you got the entire Must Read Alaska team in studio today with John Quick, Scott Levesque, and myself, Suzanne Downing. And I just want to thank you both. And listen, I want to start out the show by talking about what's going on over the Anchorage Daily News. As you guys both know, and as audience knows, they have endorsed ballot measure two. And that is really disturbing to see the editorial board caving to these outside interests. If you remember last week on our show, we had Brett Huber. Now, he's the director of the Defend Alaska elections, Vote No on Two. And he was, the, he was talking about how ballot measure two really defies this one person, one vote principle that we've always had. It makes our elections so incredibly complicated. And then all ballots have to be run through uh, a, a counting machine that you had, you've got to have confidence in that this counting machine is actually going to sort your ballot into the right place. And basically ballot measure two says you don't vote on one candidate or the other. You sort of rank them depending on which one you like the most and which one you can tolerate. And sometimes what is going to happen is your, your vote for the one that you can barely tolerate, that's the one that's going to win. And if you don't rank them, your ballot gets exhausted and thrown out after the first round. And history has shown that, that these ranked choice measures really perform poorly for people. And that elderly people especially don't really understand how it works. And it, it's confusing to them. It's confusing to people who um, English is a second language. It's confusing to people who are, aren't super well educated, may not understand how it works, but it's perfectly designed for liberal lawyers. And we had two liberal lawyers in Alaska who wrote this. It's Libby Bacalar and Scott Kendall, both extreme liberal lawyers. Uh, Libby's in charge. She's the author of a, a really raunchy blog called One, One Hot Mess Alaska. She's a very talented, interesting lady, but she's very raunchy, very left wing. And Scott Kendall is the in charge of the Recall Dunleavy Committee. These are the people who have authored this bad, uh, this bad measure that's on the ballot, and that, that Alaskans are voting on right now. In fact, you know, 120 thousand Alaskans have already voted by the time you hear this. Well, here's what we discovered about the Anchorage Daily News' endorsement. The same billionaires who are funding 99.7% of ballot measure two are funding the salaries of reporters at the ADN under a grant with ProPublica. So in other words, you have wealthy billionaires, John, and they're funding ProPublica, which is funding the, the reporters at the ADN. They're also funding ballot measure two. What do you think? That seems to me like a conflict of interest. I mean, in any other place where conservatives would be doing anything remotely close to any of this, you would have all of them in jail and the, you know, the FBI would be surrounded the building and everybody would be in handcuffs and you'd have to pay millions of dollars of fines. But if the Anchorage Daily News does it, they get a pat on the back and they get a hug and they get a bit, get up on their little virtual sing, signaling podium and, yeah, and, they get and to make get their, light of it. Right. And they get their little Pulitzer for it. And so basically the, they won a Pulitzer with this ProPublica funding. And now the guys who are funding their newsroom are also funding ballot measure two. And it's, it's just, it's really outrageous. So I wanted to, it's, I wanted to talk about who is behind the money. And first of all, is John Arnold. John Arnold in, contributed $2 million to ProPublica from 2017 to 2019. And they pay for these salaries for you know, at least one, maybe more reporters at the ADN. And so it's a two-year project. And he's a guy that you'll remember from um, the Enron days, who's kind of, uh, kind of caught up in the Enron scandal. And he now has a family foundation and he and his wife, they do all this work with the Pew Charitable Trust and they've done a lot of things like criminal justice reform. And these are the same group of nonprofits that brought us SB 91. It's the same John Arnold. It's the same Pew Charitable Trust that were advising Alaska on that horrible crime um, reform package. It's a George Soros Open Society Foundation. 
These are all people that were involved in SB 91 across type legislation across the nation of uh, doing this criminal justice reform that really did a lousy job on it in Alaska. Uh, these are the billionaires trying to buy public policy changes and forcing things down our throat like ranked choice voting. Now, the Arnolds aren't the only ones. There's these other uh, hedge fund billionaires, Dirk and Natasha Ziff. Now they are the ones who are funding this thing called Report for America. And they're one of Report for America's largest donors. They're paying the salary of another English Daily News reporter. And that person is, is reporting on oh, um, health care policy and that type of thing. But they've also donated $625,000 to Unite America. And who is that, you might ask? Mm -hmm. Glad you asked, John. Um, they're the people who are, are funding another position in the Anchorage Daily News. So basically, you have Report for America is, is, is funding reporters. And the ZIFs who fund them are also funding the ballot measure too through their foundation. So all of this is going to be covered in um, Mustard, Alaska by uh, John uh, Dan Fagan is actually working on a story right now. And he'll have that story up probably this afternoon. So uh, Monday afternoon. So I hope everybody takes a look at that. And it's, it's funny that this ballot measure too is about ending dark money oh. and ending you know, the trans, the non-transparency is what they called with it comes to campaign, campaign finance. Yet here we have it where you have these webs and these entrails that all are steer back to pay for play situations where we're going to pay the salaries of this person. We're going to pay the salaries of that person. We're going to pay the salaries of this person. And we, you know, we hope that you endorse our ballot measure. Exactly. And so the biggest newspaper being underwritten by in underwritten by groups that are actually trying to change our election system. And so how neutral do we really expect the ADN to be, at, you know, at this point? Not really. And it's unfortunate. I think a lot of people, when they saw that this new family was going to buy the ADN, they were excited that maybe for once we were going to have a paper that reported on the truth and had an unbiased lens. And that just is not what it's turned out to be. And I think that, you know, the ADN probably needs these, uh, trust funds and whatever they're called to fund their operations because businesses will leave the Anchorage Daily News because their entire readership is left wing and um, it's unfortunate. Hopefully they'll get the uh, the uh, cue eventually that you actually have conservatives in Alaska that would like to read the news as well. Well, uh, while we're talking about that, uh, why don't you talk about, let's talk about the stats on the ADN versus um, the Must Read Alaska, because we were just looking at them a minute ago and it was, it was pretty pretty much shock us both, right? Yeah, so, you know, Must Read Alaska, there's one and a half of us, that, you yeah. know, like one and then two quarters of one person where we're working on this and we're, you know, we don't have huge offices and 40 staff and, you know, uh, big, huge budgets and, and yet we are creeping up on them. So the latest report, uh, from Alexa, which is a which is a company that measures a website success in terms of traffic, um, and to be number one is to be your number one website in the world, and to be number you know two hundred two hundred thousand is you're the two hundredth most popular website in the world. Well, we are creeping up on the Anchorage Daily News every single week, and we are with within five thousand points of toppling the Anchorage Daily News for the biggest news website in Alaska. And this is very big, big for us. We're very excited about it. Um, we've so far beat all the other competition in Alaska, any other news website in Alaska. We have, we, we have more traffic than them. Anchorage Daily News is the only one that has more traffic than us. And I would say in the number of a couple months, we will have beat them with traffic. And just put that, just think about that for a second. There's 20 of them and they have all these foundations funding them. They have huge buildings. They have a paper that's been around for, you know, 70 years. And yet here we are a three person team <laughs> and we can figure out how to beat you. We're, we're going to keep trying. So I just noticed that we are now uh, ranking at 6,899 in terms of monthly U.S. rank. Now, remember, that's ranking against all other websites in the entire country, and that includes the entire uh, University of California system, all the websites that you know, Nordstrom and 
the rack, anything, everybody, anything that has a, a website, it ranks again. So we're ranking very well. Well, that's good. How are we doing on Google? Uh, Google, this last month, we had four and a half million impressions on Google, which is big. Sounds we're, big. We're, we're teeny little Alaska. We only have 700,000 people to live here. Um, like Suzanne just mentioned, we're the, we have the 6,000th biggest, most trafficked website in the entire U.S. We have a lot of people on our website that are reading the news, and we wanted, we really just want to thank people that listen and read. Totally. We, sell, we tell you these stats because we're excited because you all listen, you all read, you all share and comment and like everything, and we can't beat a, beat like, a beast like Anchorage Daily News without you. And it's exciting for us to share this with you because you are the reason that we're there in the first place. So well, last last week we we talked about the uh, Newsbreak app, and we've launched the Google Android app for Mastery Alaska. Yep. But you have done all that, so why don't you talk about that for just a minute? And let people know how they can get it. So right now we have a we have an app on the Android store. The Apple one will be launched in about two months. But right now, if you have an Android phone, any Android phone, you can go to the Google Play Store right now and download the Must Read Alaska app. It's a free app. And um, we can give you push notifications and all that kind of fun stuff. And the app is doing really well. Uh, we've had like four or five reviews and they've all been five star, which is great. And really it's another tool for the everyday person in Alaska that wants to be able to consume truthful conservative news. Um, and then we also have our partnership with Newsbreak, uh, which is syndicating all of our stories um, which we're very excited about. And we've had about 600,000 impressions with them over the last three weeks, which is really great news for uh, conservative stories that are getting into a mainstream media uh, channel without censorship. Well, that is, that is fantastic. And you were telling me that we are on the verge of having the Apple app uh, approved by the Apple developer site. So that should be in a couple of weeks, you think? Uh, should be approved in about a, a week or so, and then it should take another month to go through okay. the pipeline. So something that people can look forward to. But right now, if you're on Google Android, you can download the Must Read Alaska app and just go into the Android store, I guess it is. I only have Apple Google Play. Google Play. Android Google Play, store. right. Yeah. And, and you'll be able to, to download that. And everybody who's downloaded so far, I'm getting we're just getting great reviews. By the way, good job on that. Hey, what are you seeing in the news that's of interest to you today? Because I, I wanted to hear from you about what's been on your mind so it's interesting if you live in anchorage you know that uh, mayor berkowitz has resigned and there is a new acting mayor and you would think that that maybe some of the problems that this acting mayor may want to tackle is the fact that there's homeless people literally wandering everywhere all over anchorage including homeless children uh, schools are shut down big deal uh, our economy is in the tank. Businesses are having to close. I mean, the list goes on and on and on about huge major things that are happening right underneath our own nose. And you'd think that somebody that is the new acting mayor might want to tackle that, but no. The first basically thing that this new acting mayor said and wants to do is to hire code enforcers. Now, this is not a code enforcer for you know, to make sure you're doing your building correctly. Your and septic your tank. Septic tank. This is somebody who's going to find out if you're not wearing a mask or if your restaurant is not complying with the list of things that it's supposed to be doing because of the emergency orders. And they are going to go enforce these emergency measures that uh, are put in place with this very radical left assembly. And so I think that there's a huge misstep and it's such a reality check that these people on the Anchorage Assembly are so out of touch with the small business owner that has had to shut down their business and go bankrupt. And all these people on the Assembly and this new acting mayor care about is enforcing the codes that they hate and that has bankrupt them in the first place and is a very bad move. And I hope that there's a special election and this lady only has, you know, three weeks of her tyrannical reign. And uh, then we're, we'll get a new mayor here, hopefully. Well, on that note, we are going to see an Anchorage Assembly special meeting on the 4th. So that's on Wednesday. And they are going to discuss whether or not they're going to do a special election. It's kind of tricky because the, the regular election is in April. And then there's usually a runoff. So April 6th, then usually an uh, end of April runoff type of a thing. So, But that, that mayor, whoever's elected there, doesn't get seated until July 1. So basically, we have this acting mayor who's going to be in office for eight months, and she can, you know, we we can see Austin Quinn Davidson 
it has got the mind of sort of bringing out the brown shirts and she's going to send the, the three code enforcers, three of them. I mean, in addition to the, to the two or, or four she already has. Yeah. And so they're going to be going into businesses and doing surprise. I mean, they can walk in the door right now in our studio to make sure that we were wearing masks. These people are out of their minds spending money right now to make business more difficult in Anchorage. I'm telling you, the business community is, is horrified. Yeah. And really, if you're a business owner or just a sane person in Anchorage, this has nothing to do with being Republican or Democrat. This is, has to do with a group of people on the assembly including the acting mayor that is suppressing your rights and your ability to be a citizen in the city of Anchorage. And you all should be furious about the fact that they could care less if you go bankrupt and your business closes and you have to leave the city. They don't care. They can care less. They've proven that every time somebody gives a testimony at the assembly meeting, they're smirking and they're on their computer looking at Facebook and they don't really give a crap what anybody says. And so please, 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 if you are a citizen in Anchorage, Republican or Democrat, start to show up to these assembly meetings and voice your concern over the corruption of the, the rule that these folks have put over your life. It's ridiculous. Well, tell us how you really feel. Yeah. Listen, John, ask me, <laughs> I know, it's like, he doesn't care, not even a little bit. Hey, ask me about my interview with Dan Sullivan. How did Dan Sullivan's interview go? It sounds like you got a exclusive with Senator, now the Senator Dan Sullivan, who's hopefully going to win Tuesday night. Yeah, well, thanks for asking. I thought you'd never ask. So, yeah, this morning I got to stop by campaign headquarters over there on uh, International Boulevard and Spinard Road, and that place was hopping. Let me tell you, there were people all over it. The mood was really good. Big, big, great vibe over there. Meanwhile, I heard all through the grapevine that over at the Gross headquarters, a, an actual Prius showed up at the Gross headquarters with DC plates on it. That was surprising to me because I have never seen a car with DC plates in Alaska ever, and I've lived here since 1969. But anyway, so um, Mr. DC Gross is out there. He's probably got his, his volunteers going. Um, trying to unseat Dan Sullivan. But I tell you, the guy was strong. He, he's, he's running through the tape. That guy, he ran five miles this morning before he did our interview. And he's just uh, in really good shape. He's, so he's mentally in good shape. He feels really strong about the race. Um, you know, there's been a lot of super negative stuff that's come at him from Al Gross. This guy, uh, you know, Dan Sullivan is a U.S. Marine. He served in Afghanistan. He joined the military to fight the war on terror. And uh, you've got people like Al Gross calling him corrupt. And it's just so highly offensive to me. I mean, I try to just be a little bit more neutral on stuff. But let me tell you, when you start calling people corrupt, you better have something to back that up with. And if, if he was really corrupt, well, then you should probably tell him he can't be in the Marines anymore because, you know, you can't have that. But basically, Al Gross is just throwing these, these really vile remarks uh, about Dan Sullivan and his integrity. And yet Sullivan is just a happy warrior. I got to tell you, I've never seen a guy so positive and really convicted about what he's got to do for the next six years. You know, it's going to be all about um, the, the military readiness in our country. It's going to be about icebreakers. It's about getting more, um, more oil and gas development in Alaska and removing regulations. It's going to be about opening up the Tongass for reasonable timber harvest not we don't want to clear cut but we want to have some access we want some mills open and um, mining access that's reasonable that we didn't talk much about mining i know it's a ten tender subject right now but i tell you dan sullivan is I, there's an old persian saying the dogs may bark but the caravan moves on and he is the caravan he's moving on well while the dogs are barking and Al Gross is just yapping away over there. And Dan Sullivan is just meeting and greeting and campaigning. He's waving signs. He's making phone calls. Julie was there. She was making phone calls. There were like 15 people downstairs at the campaign headquarters on the phones. And they're probably driving Republicans crazy to get them to get out to vote. But they are not They are not going to let up. They're not leaving any stone unturned. It's, it was pretty exciting. So that um, interview should be up on Facebook today, right? Yes, it'll be on Facebook today. Today. And it's an exclusive must read Alaska. I was pretty happy about that. And it was, it was, good, to see, it was good to see him in good spirits. So before we close up, I want to make sure we talk about our election coverage because uh, I hope everybody joins us on Facebook on election night. We have a plan. We do. What's the plan? So 
on election night, we are going to be going on Facebook Live around seven o'clock at night, and we will be giving you live, truthful, honest coverage, uh, not only leading up to when we see the results, but as the results come in, we're going to be having a bunch of special guests on the show. I don't know if we want to tell about sure, any of those. Absolutely. Let's let's name them out. Art Hackney. Yep. Uh, Bernadette Wilson. They came on last time on, on Primary Night. Who else do we have? We're going to have Brett Huber, which is uh, the uh, director on uh, No On Two, uh, director of the Republican Party, Glenn Clary. Um, who else we got going well, on? Well, uh, we got um, Rick Whitbeck. He's the former vice chair of the Republican Party and Ralph Samuels, a uh, former uh, legislator. And we, we'll have a couple of others. Scott Levesque will be with us. He'll, he'll probably take a uh, a section and so we'll be on from seven to ten on facebook so you just have to go to the must read alaska page on facebook and people can find us there and share us around yep it'll be we'll have it pinned to the top of our facebook page and for those that have rsvp'd you can go on to our uh, facebook page right now and rsvp to the event so that when we do go live it'll automatically ding you that we're uh, we're live and going so what do, what do you think is going to happen um now we're, we're we're recording this late monday afternoon the polls have i mean the People have just been going to the polls like crazy and um, voting like crazy. But I think there's a, another 150,000 votes out there that will be cast on Election Day. Do you think that, um, Don, well, Donald Trump will win in Alaska. Do you think he's going to win in, in, in the Electoral College? I, I do. It's, I, and it's, I, I feel like we forget what happened to us four years ago. Because four, four, four and a half years ago, every poll store, every poller, every expert, Every news anchor told us, and even every Republican, you know, to do governor, whatever senator told us early on that Donald Trump's never going to be the president. He'll, and then when he got the nomination, he'll never win. Polls the day before the election showed Hillary had a 99% chance of winning. And literally these same people are saying, telling us the same thing over again. And so when I look at the Donald Trump event that has 40,000 people that show up to it, and the Joe Biden event where there's seven people in their trucks. I see that I, my opinion is Donald Trump is going to win with more electoral votes than he did last and four years ago. Well, that would be interesting. I know he's got to get Pennsylvania and I know he's got to get North Carolina. He's, he's got to get, um, it'd be really helpful if he had Arizona, that's kind of on the bubble and he needs Georgia as well. And, and then a couple others that he's, he's, he's our must gets. Because it's not a matter of the, the popular vote. He may get the popular vote this time. I mean, I would actually be kind of surprised if he didn't. But uh, at the same time, we're not going to know on Tuesday night because there's just too many um, outstanding ballots. For instance, in Alaska alone, uh, the Division of Elections mailed absentee ballots to everybody who's 65 years or older. They've never done that before. But I mean, that's a big cohort just to start with. And then the Democrats got absentees out to everybody. So uh, in, in, in their in their cohort. So there's just a lot of absentee ballots in, in Alaska, all over America. It's the same way people are sort of easing off at the polls there. They're, they're voting early. So we won't know, but we will have some races that we'll, we'll put like a whiteboard behind us and we'll be able to track some of the races. So in Alaska, some of them aren't going to be close. We're just going to know. But I bet we will not know the president on, on Tuesday night. We probably won't know Dan Sullivan too many outstanding ballots. If he's ahead, that will be a very, very good sign because I, I do believe that we will be catching up with uh, conservative votes on election day. I think that Don Young, I think will probably be, have a really good sign on election night, whether or not he's won. And we won't be able to say for sure, but a lot of the, the down ballot races, some of them aren't, weren't competitive at all. And we'll, we'll be able to take a look at some of them that will be surprises. I, I think we're gonna be surprised by a couple of them. I think that we're going to have the uh, uh, Republican House of Representatives in Alaska and a Republican Senate. And I'm just hoping that with that and a Republican governor, they can start working together better. Yeah, they, they just might want to remember that we do have a Republican governor, so <laughs> you might want to work with them. Be a good idea. Well, listen, that's a wrap for today's show because uh, we've, we've got some other work that we've got to get done before and, and especially get ready for tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's broadcast. But thank you, John, and thank you, Scott. I love working with you guys. We have got a great team growing here at Must Read Alaska. These are really talented people and we're making a huge difference. If you're a supporter of Must Read Alaska, you're the one who's making the difference. Thanks so much. It makes it all possible for us to stand up for what's right in Alaska. And if you'd like to support the conservative side of the news, please do so. There's a donate button on the right side of mustreadalaska.com. 
and your support allows this project to stay strong and independent against the blue tide of big liberal media. So until next time, we are signing off from somewhere in Alaska. See you, see you here next week. Take away, Scott.